In this first episode of Notes On, I'll be talking a little bit about Tigana by Guy Gabriel K. Tigana is about memory, heritage, and identity. Tigana is also about a powerful king and conqueror that, during his venture into the peninsula of the Palm, lost his only son in a battle with the country now known as Lower Court. Tigana is also about a group of rebels and freedom fighters finding ways to reach the king of Igrat, Branding, who broke Tigana, a country of lost identity, heritage, and memory. This one-off fantasy novel by Canadian author Guy Gavriel Kay tells of the struggle of a land in the midst of conquest and war and the ways the whole peninsula of the Palm survives, despite the land and power dispute between the two foreign kings, Brandon of Igret and Alberico d'Astibar. When Brandon lost his son during the attempted siege of Tigana, he wished vengeance upon the country, and after killing the Prince Valentine, Lord of Tigana, and finally dominating the region, he banished Tigana from the world's memory. Tigana was no more, and in its place, people called the land Lower Court. Tigana was no more spoken or other in the palm, and it would be as so until the last remaining individual alive during Brandon's son's death had died. A slow death to a nation, to die of starvation of being remembered, of thirst of being mentioned, and suffocating for the word Tigana. Many years later, a group of people, united by suffering and loss, decides to take the matter to their own hands and reclaim the memory of their land. Tigana is an essay on the loss of identity and the hope of owning one's own heritage. The main theme, as I have mentioned earlier, is memory. A nation which its own name has been magically banned, cursed out of existence, only leaving the few of their own brave and hopeful enough to utter the word Tigana, falling in deaf ears and vengeful fists. The loss of one's place in the world is easily spotted in our own earth, from indigenous people being forced to speak a foreign language and live under a conqueror citizenship, to a nation fading out existence within a large and more powerful empire. Those facets of memory loss are visible in plenty. For instance, during Norway's conquest of the north of Scandinavia, the Sami, Indigenous people living in the region they call Sapmi were forced to speak Norwegian and to dispose from their vestiary, their ways, and their symbols. The Sami language, a larger denomination which consists in fact of nine distinct linguistic trunks, had been almost destroyed and forgotten due to imposition and power plays. Czechs, Serbians, Hungarians, Georgians, amongst many others, were at more than one time pushed to conceal their language, heritage, and belonging to a nation, over living under dictatorships, totalitarian governments, and authoritarian regimes. These authoritarian attitudes are still present in our midst, in places difficult to notice but impossible to miss. In Tigana, the theme of loss and nostalgia is presented as the curse of the land's name. No one but the ones born in it can hear and say Tigana's name. That touches in the themes of language and of accents. Language is one of the most important tokens of heritage and memory of a people. To speak one's mother tongue is to relieve its history, its time, its suffering and victories, its decay and is also keeping it alive. Isaac Saba, 
a Sami scholar and author writes, No one shall ever overcome you if your golden, valuable, worthy language, death of your forefather's speech, is not forgotten. Sami for the Sami. To speak your forefather's speech, one is powerful, one is strong, and the memory of the land and of the people is stronger. Language and names are strong and valuable things, things that both the owners and the conqueror know. Branding of Igret did not want to destroy the individuals, the bodies, the population. He wanted to break the spirit of the people and the heart of the land by depriving it and the word of its name and of its meaning. The sense of belonging of the people is shown by the name uttered or the language spoken. By claiming you are of a place, you claim your identity, your place, and the future that this spirit will shape. Which brings us to the themes of revolution and rebellion. What is important in Alison's character mainly, but in all of the other main characters, is that they are not valiant warriors nor champions of honor, but they are desperate, lost in a word that does not contain them nor their history, in their last breath of hope that somehow by any means the name Tigana will come back to life. All of them throughout the novel do terrible things, from slaving a wizard to killing a governor and taking one's own life, to starting a war where many innocents will be killed, just for the slight possibility that what made who they are, what their parents fought for and died, and what they wish their own sons and daughters could enjoy, will be heard again. Their acts of violence and deceit are not to be praised, but they are to be comprehended only. I believe that Guy Gabriel K managed to create a heartbreaking story of love, of passion, of hope, and, as I said many times, of memory. There are many other themes within Tigana, and I have covered its main, most poignant ones. However, we can still have a closer look into a few smaller themes. The nuclear family and honor. This is a theme that is spread amongst all of the main characters, and also the villains, if we can call them that. Allison has a complicated relationship with his mother, the only living member of his family, who believes that the heir of the throne of Tigana is a traitor and has dishonored his father and brothers. Allison is taken from Tigana as a child to survive and survive he does, and does not return to the, his homeland for many years, which grieves his mother, who sees more than Alison knows. Katriana and her father, the artist in the war, friend of Prince Valentin de Tigana, and her constant need for approval and to honor her family, bringing her to attempt to take her own life just to bring the name of her land back. Devon, whose father sang him songs of Tigana in Haydn, laying the foundations for the revelation of his own heritage. Baird and Dianora, the two siblings separated by war, one bound to the heir of Tigana, willing to fight until the end for his country and for his prince, the other bound to the sorcerer king of Igrat, the one who cursed the land she could once say the name. Dianora is particularly interesting because she is the one closest to branding, with feasible ways to finally end his reign, but who also found love and partnership with the man branding, leading her to face her destiny and the fork on her path. Another important theme is that of choices and paths. Branding is the first to be in the presence of the Rizalka, a mythical being that presents whoever is close to it choices and consequences. 
As the Rizalka legend says, one man sees a Rizalka, his life forks there. Two men see a Rizalka, one of them shall die. Three men see a Rizalka, one is blessed, one forks, one shall die. One woman sees a Rizalka, her paths come clear to her. Two women see a Rizalka, one of them shall bear a child. Three women see a Rizalka, one is blessed, one is clear, one shall bear a child. The Rizalka's appearance is that of a young woman, naturally bound to water, and its presence itself is enough to whoever is near it to be affected by its lore. It is probably inspired by the Rizalka of Slavic mythology, an entity with lore as of the mermaids or selkies, normally luring people to their deaths, sometimes through tickling. To end the discussion, some of the influences of Tigana. As it is known, Tigana takes much of its word and background from Renaissance Italy, which even though it's not unique, it is definitely fresh and different. Besides that, the themes of memory and loss are linked to the loss of people and nations in our own world. As an overlapping theme, I believe it is not based on an identity, but on the value of identity itself. And obviously, Guy Gabriel K bring a young and warm influence from Tolkien's writing. From the beautiful prose to the detailed transition from superficial depiction to character development, GGK uses all the tools he has learned from working in the Silmarillion with Christopher Tolkien, as well as forging his own weapons of his own metal. Tigana is a fascinating reading experience and an essay on history, heritage, identity, and loss. Thank you for listening to this first episode of On Notes, part of the Myth Herder Observatory.